Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to be taking a look at the BTEC Victor 25 amp. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So behind me is my wife's Jeep that I get to drive maybe once or twice a month at the most, and she absolutely forbids a permanent radio installation in this vehicle. So I've been trying to come up with other solutions. Now I've already got a power cord run underneath the driver's seat where I can power various radios as we're traveling, but it's a bit annoying putting things in and out of the vehicle each time we decide to take hers instead of taking my Jeep. So I wanted to try to find something that was a a uh, good compromise for me and for her. And that's where I came up with this amp idea. So I'm going to be installing this in her Jeep today. I'm going to upgrade the mag mount antenna that's already on there and take you guys along for the ride. When we're done, I'm going to also give you some feedback on this after I've had maybe a month or so to play with it and uh, see exactly how it's going to work out for me. Right now, as of today, it's about a week before Hamvention 2022, but you guys won't be seeing this until sometime in late June, maybe July. Let's go ahead and get this installed. So now that that new signal stuff mag mount is installed, it should be super simple just to drop the amp under the seat, plug up the power cable, and the two pieces of coax. One that's going to run back here to the mag mount on the back, the other that's going to run up to the HT. Now while I'm talking about that, I did make a couple of mods to this as soon as it came in. It comes with a cigarette lighter plug on it. I took that off and I just replaced that with power poles. In addition, I have adapted, and hopefully you guys can see that, but I have adapted both of the connectors on the back of the amp to BNC style connectors. This will make it super, super quick to get things connected and ready to go when I jump in this vehicle. So let's go ahead and throw this under the seat. All right, so it's pretty dark under here. I didn't bother to grab a shop light because I think this is going to be super, super quick. I do have a extra accessory port here that we use when we're pulling our RV, so I definitely need to keep this in line. So what I've done is I have built an adapter for the power pole cable so that I can get two different things plugged up now at the same time. So we've got that, and we'll just kind of keep that tucked back out of the way. And then we can go ahead and plug up the amp to the second, uh, the, the split portion of that uh, power pole. So, and I just heard the amp kick on, so we're good to go there. Now it's just a simple matter of getting the coax connected. And I've got it back here in the back. I may have to pull out. No, I might be okay. So let's go ahead and connect that to the back of the amp. And that's it. I've got one more little bitty short piece of coax that I need on this side of the amp. And that will run up to the HT that's going to be laying beside the seat. Now it's as easy as removing the cover from the mag mount and attaching the antenna from the HT. Okay, so now when I sit down in the car, I've got a handy little spot to put the HT, and then it's as simple as connecting that one little single piece of coax to same BNC style connector, so it makes it quick and easy. With the attached mic to the HT, I'll be able to easily talk on it, or if I wanted to, I could pass this off to the passenger and allow them to talk on it as well. So give me a couple of weeks, and I'll tell you guys what I think about well, wait a minute. You guys don't have to wait. We can do a little time travel. So what do I think about it? This thing is awesome. It's been about six weeks since I installed this in the Jeep, and it is phenomenal for the money. 
Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. I got a couple of charts I want to show you guys. So I did the same trip three different ways. What you're looking at on the screen right now is when I ran my Jeep Wrangler with the 50 watt FTM 400 uh, and APRS engaged. And you'll see that I got several data points uh, up here in this section. That's because I'm kind of closer to my own Digipeter at that point. And it's about a 30 minute one way drive. Uh, through some uh, pretty hilly terrain down through here. Uh, you'll see that I do have a couple of data points uh, here to the west of Reedyville and one right around Reedyville. And then when I get to Woodbury, I've got several data points. Now let's look at that same trip that I took in the Liberty without the amp. And you'll see that I have very few data points to work with. I do still have a couple up here uh, where I'm close to my own Digipeter. Right here, it looks like I've got two more. And then there is nothing left until, or, or nothing else uh, to fill in before I get to Woodbury. Now, again, this is without the amp. So let's run the same route again this time with the amp engaged. And you'll see that I've got several more data points. Uh, I do get all of those again up here when I'm close to my own Digipeter. I do get one here, one here, a couple in Readable, and then again in Woodbury. But it's uh, much more descriptive of the path even though it's not perfect. But when you compare that one uh, with the amp to the one that I'm running on the Wrangler, you can see that I don't have a, you know too many more data points. I think this one right here is an extra data point that you don't see on the other map. Uh, yeah, so that would be I'm trying to look at this map and determine exactly where that was. I believe that would have been right here on the map is where uh, you're seeing the other one uh, when I make that turn to the south. Let's kind of jump back and forth between them. The maps aren't exactly the same, but they're close. Yeah, that's that turn to the south right there before I get to Readable. So I'm not getting quite as many with the amp uh, as I do with the 50 watt FTM 400. Keep in mind though, I'm only running a 19 inch HT antenna on the Jeep Liberty. On my Jeep Wrangler, I'm running a 50 watt rig and I've got a 5 8 wave antenna mounted to the front of it. So that's definitely going to give us some advantage when we're in the Wrangler over uh, being in the Liberty. But uh, again, you can see when I'm not running with the amp, I get a lot fewer data points. So this is definitely making a difference. Now, last thing I want to check is I want to check and see what the actual power output is from this amp. Okay, so here's where things get really interesting and I was absolutely floored by these results. Now, before we get to the power test, I do want to give a shout out to Gigaparts uh, and thank them for sending me over this watt meter so that I could do this test. This was a piece of test equipment that I didn't have in the shack already. I'll leave a link to this particular watt meter down in the description below. But right now I've got a Yezu FT65R hooked up, so roughly a 5 watt output HT, and that is connected to the amp. So let's go ahead and key that up. And yeah, so I'm seeing 46 and a half watts coming out of the amp. And that really surprised me because I should only be getting 25 to 30 watts out of this particular amp. So I'm not real sure what's going on here, why I'm getting that additional power out of it. Is it because it's a uh, inexpensive amp and uh, quality control is just not quite there? I can't say one way or the other. All I know is this amp has been working for me and I'm going to continue to use it because it has made a dramatic improvement over just having the HT in the car. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in today. We will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.